Today, let's see how a slash effect can be done in Godot. It's one of those effects that always adds a nice visual boost to your game. There are several ways of doing this, and today I'm gonna share with you a simple and easy one. So, without further ado, let's jump right into this. I made this entire project available on my Patreons page, where you will find a huge library, links below. So let's begin by adding a new node and search for GPU Particle 3D. This one is gonna be for the slash mesh. Let's make sure it spawns only one particle by setting the amount to 1, and that particle can leave 0 0.7 seconds. Let me just increase the FPS so it becomes smoother. Now on the draw passes, I'm gonna go to quick load, and I'm gonna use this projectile mesh that I have here, which is essentially a slash. And I use the same technique from this tutorial, where I show a quick way on how to create a 3D slash in Blender. I left the link below. Once you have the 3D slash, you can create a new particle process material, click it to open these settings, which is essentially the particle system, and we want to say the gravity is zero, so it stays in the same position. Let me just push this up a little bit, and now in geometry for the material, we want to create a new shader material, click here to open this up and then create a new shader. Make sure it's a visual shader in spatial mode and I'm gonna change the folder to the shaders folder that I have here and then we can call this one the material01 for example or the slash material. Let me just select the material we created and now in here on the visual shader we want to start with a text 2D, in this case a parameter for the main text and it's a parameter so you can change it however you want without opening the visual shader. Then we need to sample this. From here let's create an input node, switch it to color. Make sure we create a vector operation node, switch it to a vector 4 and then select multiply. So we can multiply these two which have the red, green, blue and alpha channel and then connect this to the albedo. Let's drag a line from the alpha of the color, search for a float operation. Make sure it's in multiply mode and multiply it with the alpha that comes from the texture. This way you will have transparency. In our slash particle system, down here on the material override, in the shader parameters now we have access to the texture, to the main texture we created. Let me just do a quick load so we can select a gradient, this texture right here, which is available for free by the way on the link below. And let's make sure that we turn on unshaded, so it is not influenced by the lights of the scene. Let's play with the color of this by saying, for example, here on display, on the color curves, for the color in raw mode, we can use something like 2.8, 1.3 and 0 0.8 and you will get this bright orange. Obviously you can try different colors, but here we go, looking interesting already. In this case it's glowing, by the way, because we have a world environment with glow turned on. Right, so we have the main slash now. Let's add a few more things, like a trail. We are going to fake a trail with another GPU particles 3D. You can call it slash mesh02 or trail. What we want to make sure is that the amount is 1 as well and the time 0 0.7. Let's make sure FPS is smooth by increasing it. And then in the draw passes, we want to do a quick load this time for the second mesh that comes in the package below for free. It's essentially an extension of the slash, but we are going to use it for a trail. Now let's create a new particle process material. Make sure gravity is zero. And I'm going to push it up the same value so it matches the other slash. And then down here in geometry, we want to go ahead and create a new shader material. Click on it. And on shader, let's select quick load so we can choose our material 01 or the slash material, depending on how you named it. On the shader parameters, in this case, let's do another quick load for the same text of the gradient. Now, for the color in display, we are going to use a simple 1 for the red channel, 0 0.7 for G, 0 0.2 for the B. Essentially, a darker orange so we can have some contrast. Now, as you can see, it's on top of the slash. So let's make sure that down here in sorting, all the way down, that we set it to minus 2. Alright, looking good. Now let's go ahead and add another GPU particles 3D. Let me parent this here. Say the amount is 1 and the time is 0 0.7. Increase the FPS count and 
on the draw passes now i'm going to use the same mesh the second mesh and then i'm going to create a new particle process material where we can say the gravity is zero and in here we are going to add a different trail let's just push this up a little bit so it matches the same position as the rest and now in geometry for the material override a new material but this time a different visual shader a new one a material called text to scroll and we are once again going to use a text to d parameter sample this with a text to 2d and the uvs now are going to be controlled with this uv function set to panning it will help us scroll the text itself to control the scale we can create a vector to parameter called the text tiling we want to make sure the default values are one for the x and one for the y now for the offset we are going to need a vector operation in this case i use the vector 4 but a vector 2 will do just fine the first one is for time that is going to be multiplied with a vector 2 parameter for the texture speed and in this case i'm going to say the default values are 0 and minus 3 so it scrolls automatically as soon as you use this material now essentially we need to mask this and you will see why in a moment so i'm going to duplicate these two nodes up here the first one is going to be called the main text and down here we are going to call it the gradient or the mask texture let's do another vector operation where it's a vector 4 multiply it with this one down here and all of this is going to be multiplied with a color we can use an input node and then another vector operation vector 4 multiply it with this one and we need to separately multiply the alpha channels with a float operation the alphas are going to be connected to the alpha output and the vector 4 is going to be connected to the albedo now on our shader parameters the main texture is going to be this noise which is already scrolling because texture speed by default is set to minus 3 on the y-axis oh let's also make sure that this is unshaded we don't want this to be affected by the lights here we go now let's just select the color up here for example this one that i'm using and then as you can see at the end it's clipping what we can do is use this gradient texture that is also available for free below and it will essentially mask everything that is transparent what is white is visible what is transparent won't be visible creating this very interesting effect and lastly let's add some stretched particles to this so let's create a new gpu 3d particle in this case the amount can be much more like 25 and the time something like half a second on the draw passes we can use a quad mesh and for the geometry we can actually use the default material that comes with godot called the new standard material 3d on the transparency we can say it's alpha and on the vertex color let's make sure we use as albedo so the particle system can influence the material color and in this case on the albedo we are going to do a quick load for the flare which is also available for free on the link below and then we just need the process material the particle system basically let's create a new one click here and as you can see they are falling down which means the gravity should be set to zero from here let's just push this up as a matter of fact we can go down here to node 3d and say the y is zero since it's a child of the slash it will go right in the middle fantastic and now the idea is that these particles go really fast in the opposite direction of the slash we want them to be stretched and we want them in a certain area so up here on spawn on position we can say the emission shape is a box and as you can see they are spawning in the cube shape the cool thing is that now we can say that the y is going to be small like 0 0.2 and then we want to stretch this box on the x like 3 for example and the z we can leave it at 1 yeah no problem I'm just going to push them a little bit back all right looking good now let's add some velocity to this basically down here on initial velocity the minimum can be 40 and the maximum 60 and as you can see they go a wire they go everywhere and that's because of two reasons the direction is set to x we can say it's zero for the x but minus one for the z so they go in the opposite direction of the slash but they are still going everywhere because we have a too high spread if we decrease it to something like 2, the angle will decrease and they will go straight forward in the opposite direction of the slash. Looking good. 
but as you can see they are not facing the camera and they should be facing their velocity vector. So what we can do up here on the particle flags is turn on align Y. This way they will align with their velocity vector just like this. Now it's just a matter of stretching them which we can do on the display, on the scale. Let's say the minimum is 0 0.1 and the maximum is 0 0.2 but this will only shrink them to stretch them. We need a new scale curve that says curve X, Y and Z so we can control each axis and for example the X1 the last key will be 0 so they shrink towards the end and on the Y it will happen the same thing let me just push the first key to more or less 0 0.25 but the max value is going to be 10 and this way we can push this key all the way up and they will be stretched the particles as you can see looking good now it's just a matter of adding color brightness to this remember I have a glow in my scene by the way and for the color I'm going to use 6 for the red channel and 2 for the G channel and here we go looking good now if you want you can use a color ramp so they fade in in the beginning you can say the alpha of the first key is 0 but make sure it's completely white one for the RGB and the last key you can push it to more or less around here you can control how much it fades in the beginning essentially and then you can push this forward or backwards as long as the stretched particles are not visible in front of the slash we are good to go and that's essentially it folks I hope you have enjoyed this quick and easy slash tutorial. If you want to get all of these variations, I made them all available on my Patreon page, links below. And by supporting me, you keep the channel going and you get access to plenty of other assets. I want to say thank you to each patron that supported me last month and a quick shout out to the top tier patrons which are Alberto Sageres, Alexei, Alan Alstad, Andre Ripa, Javier Tobali, Ben Basso, Cyber Cradle, Daniel Schmidt, David Molina, Diego Marcos, Lua Alma, Frosty40, Grub Lab, Ingward Popov, Ivan Jacobi, Jared Billy, Jelly Mesh, Jonathan Carlson, Casey Miller, Lee and Old, Matt Morn, Mike Bell, Nathan Peckenpah, Obreon, Oitsk, Pierre Mayoru, Pradip San, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, Ray Rowan, RVR, Sean Aguilar, Studio Prima, Tiago Paiva, Tin, Barry Sutter, Whatever Marta, Will Polian, Zur, Bijine Seru, Dong Mao Dong, Sheng Pyong Ling, Min Jae Kim, and Sang Gyeong Go. Thank you all very much for your support, and I hope to see you all on the next one. Thank you. Bye.